Hey, what's up guys? Got the brand new Apple TV 4K third generation just came out with a new A15 Bionic chip. So I'm gonna unbox this thing and review it. Now, the biggest improvement will be when you're gaming because that's really when the processor is being put under intensive stress. Other than that, it shouldn't be that big of a jump. Granted, it is going to be smooth, I would imagine. So you got your power cord, you get a gigabit ethernet port, which is awesome, and you get an HDMI 2.1 port. However, it is limited to 4K 60 frames per second. So there are two variants of this. This is the slightly more expensive $149 version, which comes with 128 gigabytes of storage, an ethernet port, and thread networking support. So if you have some smart home devices that run on thread, this can be used as the hub. Now the there's a $129 version that is half the storage, so 64 gigabytes with no ethernet port and no thread networking support. And for Wi-Fi, it is Wi-Fi 6, if you guys are wondering. But this is fairly light, fairly small, kind of smaller than the Roku Ultra, Wow, that's that's honestly, a, even the matte portion of it is a fingerprint magnet. But it's, it's slightly smaller than the Roku Ultra, if you guys are wondering, and a lot smaller than the latest Fire TV Cube third generation. Now, in a separate video, I am going to compare all three of these, so make sure you guys subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you guys know when that video comes out. Okay, so pretty awesome, doesn't take much space, makes it more portable, and... Yeah, I'm all for that. So looking at the remote, something new that they introduced this year is it's now being charged via USB-C. Now, if only they can make the iPhone go to USB-C, I think the next generation they will go to USB-C, but man, I've been hoping for that for quite some time now. It, it's very nice. It's basically the same as last year's, except it has USB-C instead of the lightning cable and just overall the buttons feel nice. It feels like a heavy duty quality controller. And we get our power connection, basic power cord, and yeah, some instructions. And it does not come with the USB-C cord for this. I'm just gonna use one of my extra USB-C cords. Luckily, I have a whole bunch of those. So here's the interface, very clean and organized. All your Apple stuff up on top, Apple TV, music, photos, arcade, and fitness. And the App Store, if you wanna download more apps, which I downloaded a few. The cool thing about the App Store is if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can actually approve it on that, and it will download on this, so you don't have to type in your password on this, which is kind of awesome, honestly. And then you get your settings, and I downloaded a few apps, so let's launch some. So Crunchyroll, this thing was basically instantaneous launch. And even if I were to close Crunchyroll, so if I double tap on this, I'm gonna slide, and it's kind of like closing something on your phone. I swipe up, and good to go. So once I do that, it's closed, I can even open it up with Siri. Open Crunchyroll. Super fast, very, very fast. Honestly, that's amazing. And when I do the comparison between this and the Cube and the Roku, it will be more apparent how amazing that actually is. Now, Netflix also opens up fairly quickly. It was open, but even if I were to close it and reopen it again, it still opens up fairly quickly. So right away, good to go. So. Processing wise, smoothness wise, it's very, very fast. Let's go to settings. I'm also gonna do a speed test for you guys. So settings, just wanted to mention something cool. Screensaver looks awesome, so you could pick your different type. I picked Arial, you can also select your photos if you want. But you could go to themes and you could basically say which one you wanna see or which one you don't wanna see. So I have them all on show, but I could click on hide as well. But previewing them, that looks awesome. And if I don't want this one, I could go to this one. I could just swipe and go to that one. I could swipe again and go to this other one. And when I'm swiping, I'm actually just going like this. So this thing is swipeable, which is pretty awesome. So let me show you guys something else that's interesting. Okay, and just real quick with the video stuff, 4K Dolby Vision, all that stuff, it supports Atmos and everything's golden here. 
Now, if I go down to network, oops, not system. If I go to network, you could see I've connected it via ethernet right now and I'm gonna run a speed test so you guys could see how fast this thing actually is. So I downloaded the speed test app and I'm gonna click go. And my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 940 uh, and 880 megabits per second upload. So I just ran this thing. I actually got 938 and 940 or so just a few minutes ago, but it, either way, it's still very, very impressive that I'm getting these crazy fast speeds on this device. Again, it's just phenomenal that I can get these speeds because this supports gigabit ethernet and this thing is crazy fast. Now, I'm gonna unplug the ethernet cable and I'm gonna run my speed test once again. Now, this does support Wi-Fi 6, so, no network detected, check your internet connection. It should default to Wi-Fi 6. Let's see if it'll work right now, but if not, I'll go to network and I'll see if it's gonna connect. Okay, it automatically switched to Wi-Fi 6 already. So, it's getting a lot slower. It's basically getting half the speeds for the download, and it's gonna get around 300 megabits per second or so for the upload. So definitely a drop in speed. Still very, very fast over Wi-Fi, but if you have an ethernet cable connected via ethernet, it can go much faster, again, because it supports gigabit speed. So I'm very impressed with these numbers. Honestly, this thing is awesome. I, I, I'm more impressed than I was expecting to be. I was just like, okay, it's gonna be nice, it's gonna be fast. I was like, oh, A15 Bionic, it's gonna be smooth. But man, this thing is really, really good. And even the games came out great, so. Now, one thing that I did notice that was kind of missing is if I say, play Naruto on Netflix. And it doesn't understand that. But if I say, Naruto, it will find it and it will go to Crunchyroll, which does have all the seasons for it. So you can't specifically, it looks like some of this stuff doesn't specifically work if I say, hey, play this on Netflix. I just have to say, open Netflix and I'll go there. And the same is true for Prime Video. So if I say, play bad guys on Prime Video. So didn't even find that. Bad guys. There it is. So I found it here. Let's see where it's, Okay, so it's taking me to the Apple menu instead of realizing I actually own it on Prime Video. Could just click play over here and boom, it'll start playing. Let's see how fast this thing is. Okay, that is almost instantaneous loading. So fast forwarding, rewinding, and I'm just gonna press play. That is basically instantaneous loading. Even though it doesn't recognize Naruto on Netflix, I could say, play Ted Lasso on Apple TV. Granted, it's only available on Apple TV. And I can also say, who stars in this? Which shows me the names of the characters. So the only con I could come up with is that Siri doesn't understand exactly what I'm trying to say with some stuff like Naruto on Netflix or something like that. But aside from that, this thing is awesome. It's very smooth, very fast. You have a lot of apps. The games actually work surprisingly well and that's thanks to the A15 Bionic chip. Apps open up very quickly. I also like the fact that they designed this like a phone where I could kind of swipe and close things and I'm good to go there. So overall, very impressed with this. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button and be on the lookout for the comparison between this and the Fire TV Cube 3rd Gen and the Roku Ultra. Thank you guys for watching.